What's going on guys, John Alder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to look at pop-up boxes for Kivi and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at pop-up boxes. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership, that's all my courses, videos, and books for one time via just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, this is the first video of the new year, 2021, woo! <laughs> I hope you guys had a great holiday weekend, holiday season, uh, but it is now January 4th, January 4th, time to get back to it. So in this video, we're gonna look at pop-up boxes with Kibi. So we got this little pop-up box here. I've just got this basic app and it's got a label and a button. When we click the button, we get a pop-up box and it says stuff and it has a title and you can close it and uh, pretty simple. So this is a little bit different than normal widgets we've played with in the past. It's a little bit more complicated, not too bad, just a little different than normal. So I've got two files here, popup.py and popup.kv. And this is our basic Kivi starter code that we always have. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And you can see we've got our builder. I've got it set to popup.kv, which is this Kivi file. So inside of here, we've got our basic box layout. I've set the orientation to vertical and the root width and root height for the size. So it expands to the entire size of the thing. So let's start out by just creating a couple of things here. Let's create a label and we want the text to say uh, popup stuff. I don't know. And let's give this a font underscore size of like 32 to make it bigger. And then let's make a button. And let's have the text here say, I don't know, pop up. And also let's give this a font underscore size of like 32 to make it bigger. Let's go ahead and just save this and run it to make sure that looks okay. So head over to our terminal and let's run python popup.py. And when we do, we get this, we got our label here and our button here it doesn't actually do anything yet, but okay, looking good. So we've got our basic setup going here. So now let's actually build out the pop-up. So this needs to be outside of everything. If you try and put it inside, you're gonna, it's just not gonna work. So it's gotta be sort of top level here. And I'm just going to call this, I don't know, my pop-up, something like that. And this is gonna be at pop-up, right? So strictly speaking, I think, that's kind of all we really need, but we can do a few things. First, let's go auto underscore dismiss, and let's set this equal to false. So what auto dismiss does is if you click outside of the pop-up box somewhere else on your app, the pop-up will go away, unless you set this to false. If you set it to false, then you need to click the button in the pop-up. So, you know, the pop-up pops up, there's a button on it, you click the button, and then that pop-up closes. So we can set this to false. We'll play around with this to see what it looks like, but that's pretty much it. So we can also give this a title if we want. So let's go title and let's go this. This is a pop-up box. Okay, I think that's all we need really to start. So to actually call this thing, to actually make it work, let's come down to our button and let's go on underscore release. We want to call this thing, which is my pop-up, right? So my pop-up and it's a, an instance of a class, basically. And what do we want to do? We want to open it, right? Now, this actually won't work because we're calling this thing. If we actually run this now, if we save this and run it, we'll see. Let's go Python popup.py. When we click this, we get an error. My popup is not defined. And that's because it's, you know, it's up here. It's outside of our, our guy here. We can't put this inside of here. And when it's not inside of here, everything inside of here doesn't know what this is. So we can actually use something called factory and we just need to import it. And so let's go hashtag colon import factory. And this is gonna be from kivi.factory.factory. And notice the capitalization here on the second factory and also on this guy right here. And this is how we import things usually into our KV file. We've done this before, I think. So nothing new here. So factory basically lets you sort of define a class and instantiate it from anywhere in your app. So this will allow us to make this sort of understand where this my pop up is. But in order to do that, we have to call factory right here. So it's factory dot my pop up dot open. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it. See if that worked. 
So popup.py, bring this over here, boom. And then we get this, this is a pop-up box. This is the title right here. And you can see it's, it's the size of the entire app and there's nothing in it because we haven't put anything in it yet. So, and we can't actually close it. So we have to close out the whole app and we can change the size of this, but let's start out first by creating a button in here. So let's just go button and the text will be close me, right? Maybe lowercase e. And let's give this a font underscore size. I like 24 to make it a little bit bigger. Now to make this work, we call on release and we just want to go root dot dismiss. And now you'll notice this dismiss sort of function, I guess you would call it. And this open function, these are the two main functions that exist for the pop-up class, right? You can open it and you can dismiss it. So here we want to just dismiss it. So let's go ahead and save this and run it one more time. Now this is going to be a big button and the pop-up is taking up the entire size of our app. Here's our title. This is the pop-up box. And if we click this, it disappears. So, okay, strictly speaking, we're done. This is a pop-up box. It works. Now this is not great because it's so big. Oh, oh, uh, which is probably not what you want. So you can change the size of your pop-up like you change the size of, you know, just about everything. So we can use, let's see, let's put it under our auto dismiss and let's go size hint. And so let's make this smaller, like 0 0.6 by 0 0.2. And we can also go position underscore hint to position it exactly where we want it. And we've looked at these things in past videos. Check the link in the comment section below for the playlist if you want to see those. And let's set the X to like 0 0.2 ish. And let's set the top to let's go 0 0.9. So let's go ahead and save this and run it see what that looks like. So we've got our app, we can click this, boom. Now we get a smaller pop-up box. It's sort of at the top and same button is on there, close me. You know, if we wanted to play around with this, we've got this at 0.9, we could put it at 0.3 to really push it down if we want. Uh, let's run this. So here, now it's down here. All right, if we wanna put it all the way to the top, we can set our top to one. And you know, this is just, position hint stuff we've looked at in other videos, like I said, but you know, we can play around with it a little bit just for fun because it's Monday morning and now it's all the way at the top. So, okay, that's pretty cool and pretty easy. I'm gonna set this back to 0 0.9. I don't wanna push it down a little bit. So, okay, we've got now our title and we've got a button. And what if we want other things in here? Well, you can put anything you want, but if we take, for instance, a label and let's set the text equal to something in our pop up box, right? And let's give this a font underscore size of like 24 again. If we save this and run it, we're gonna get an error. And let's take a look and see what the error is. So if we click this, boom, we get this pop up exception. Pop up can only have one widget as the content, right? So you can have anything you want in there, but there can only be one thing. Now that doesn't make a lot of sense because you need always, you're gonna want more than one thing. So here we have two things. We've got a button and a label, right? So we can't have that. But what we can do is just, you know, build out an entire box layout, right? And then inside of that one thing, we can put as many things as we want, right? So, I mean, strictly speaking, that'll work. Let's save that and run. It's probably not the way I want it to look, but just for fun, we'll, we'll see. Boom. Now we have this is kind of trailing over here. It's smooshed together. I would change the orientation and stuff. So, I mean, we might as well do that here. I'm just gonna copy this, boom, uh, da, 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 right there. Now, if we save this and run it, it's gonna start to look a little better. And boom, pop up. Now we get this up and down vertical, something in our pop-up box, and you get the idea. We got our close me button and it works. Now that doesn't look great, but you can play around with it and make it look any way you want. You can put anything you want in it in the normal way that you put things in things as we've learned throughout this playlist. Uh, this is just a quick and easy way to put something in there. So just remember inside of our pop-up, you can only have one widget, right? But this box layout is a widget and inside of the box layout, you can have as many, st as many things as you want. So that's a sort of hacky way to get around that pretty easily. So let's see, what else do we got here? We've got this auto dismiss. Let's set this equal to true. Now remember, this means if you click outside, well, let's set it back to false first. And, run this again and I'll just show you. 
If we run this guy, we click our pop-up. Here's our pop-up box. If I click down here, I'm clicking outside of here. Nothing is happening, right? Our box is still there. To close it, we have to click the close me button and then it closes, right? If you don't want that, if you want the opposite of that to happen, you can set this equal to true. Auto dismiss true. Now this will automatically dismiss your pop-up when you click anywhere outside of the pop-up, basically. So let's go ahead and save this, run it. Zoom, pop-up. Now if I click down here, boom, our pop-up disappears. If I click right here, our pop-up disappears. I can still click our pop-up button, close me, and it will disappear, but it will also disappear elsewhere. So I think that's pretty much it for pop-up boxes. Pretty simple, and that's really kind of all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 on memberships, two pages, $49, access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.